Hello, my name is Felipe Curgios and today I will be presenting the issue of terrorism on society from both a local and global perspective. Firstly, according to the U.S. Department of Justice and the FBI, terrorism is defined in the Code of Federal Regulations as the unlawful use of force and violence against persons or property to intimidate a government or the civilian population. Terrorism could be pursued for both political and or religious needs, and overall destruction and fear are always the end product. Initially, with terrorism causing a sense of fear in society and the continuation of destruction, it has caused law enforcement procedures to become much stricter. I will be discussing how law enforcement procedures and rules have changed from previous acts of terrorism and how different security measures could help inhibit or lessen the damage of terrorism. Before I get into my research, I would like to discuss about my two partners who will also be presenting on the issues of terrorism. My first partner, Christian Pien, has researched mainly on the economic impacts that terrorism causes from a local and global standpoint. Within his research, he revolves the effects of terrorism on tourism within his locations. He plans to find the most competent way to establish cost containment in order to save money in local and global economies. My other partner, Taylor Tyson, has examined the social and cultural perspective as she looks at the most of as she looks at the most effective way to prevent casualties. Within her research, she dives into the origin of terrorism, herostratic aims, as well as influence of religious injustice. Moving on to my perspective, as acts of terrorism continue to erupt, recent attacks in the United States have brought more attention to, the, to law enforcement and has caused responses on terrorism to change. After the Las Vegas shooting on, in October of 2017, security protocols have been set to change. As stated by Manuel Gomez, a former FBI agent, he suggested that security professionals will likely reconsider future events being taken place at outside venues near high-rise buildings. Also considering that the local hotel buildings were not screened or secured, this brings me into my first local solution. With any sort of a large crowd, all security measures should be applied. Increasing the security is an obvious solution and has been discussed every time after an attack. Security customs and checkpoints should be increased with local officers. Security of a vast amount of people should not be minimized and taken lightly because tragedies like the Fort Lauderdale Airport shooting, the previously stated attack in Las Vegas, and the Orlando nightclub shooting will, co will occur more, more often. Excuse me. Although increasing security measures will not eliminate attacks, it will surely minimize the deaths and damage to civilization. As all, as all terrorist attacks bring death upon people and disrupt the way of life, law enforcement always responds to an attack. Although the response might not be great, it changes procedures that would be followed after the attack in order to prevent civilians from future threats and attacks. Such as after the Fort Lauderdale air attack, major airports in states like New York and California had announced their security was immediately increased. This goes along with a possible solution that is currently being discussed in Congress. The solution consists of all airports to station a law enforcement office, officer within, within 300 feet of each security checkpoint. At, at, this idea was given importance after an attack at LAX airport in 2013. If this idea is applied to all airports, then noticing suspicious activity will occur more often and possibly saving lives and avoiding damage. Globally, attacks are much more frequent and this brings different responses and thoughts to terrorism. During the Paris attack in January 2015, a total of, 20, a total of 17 people were killed, including two police officers. A According to an article from In Public Safety, this prompted law enforcement to take positions on the threat that were imposed on the country, which could have been limited if the use of unmanned aerial systems were implemented. This brings me to one of my solutions, which could be used globally, but limited locally. Although the United States is restricted by the Federal Aviation Administration, which would limit the use of UAS systems, country globally, countries globally, such as France, could benefit from the use. UAS systems could re reduce potential losses of law enforcement and civilian life. With the airborne system, this could safely provide intelligence and surveillance from a safe distance. With this use, officers would be provided with instantaneous intelligence of an incident, which would then allow law enforcement to better take positions or approach the attack in an orderly manner. European countries have begun their own ways to stop terrorism. For example, Germany is increasing their law enforcement personnel, accelerating deportation of immigrants who have committed crimes and have gained the authority to take away German citizenship to those who join foreign terror, terror militias. As the European Union created its counter-terrorism strategy, the Union set out key priorities to prevent terrorism. According to the European Union, some of these priorities include developing intercultural dialogue 
within and outside the union, addressing recruitment in particular key environments such as prisons and places of religious training or worship, as well as develop a media of communication strategies to better explain EU policies. The EU intends to further progress information on terrorism and make sure that prevention is fully integrated. Conforming to the European Council, as Europe still faces terrorism just like the rest of the world, the EU adopted a comprehensive approach to stop the issue of foreign attackers. The Council adopted a gun control policy as well as reinforced checks at borders. The EU counterterrorism strategy is very similar to the FDLE strategy that I will discuss next. The EU strategy is to prevent, protect, pursue, and respond accordingly. With previous attacks in the United States, the widely known September 11th attack caused other states, including Florida, to increase their domestic security. Now bringing up local solutions, the Florida Department of Law Enforcement has helped the state's domestic security efforts. According to Florida Domestic Security Strategy, this has led the FDLE to create several procedures in order to prepare, prevent, protect, respond, and recover from all hazards through the interdisciplinary consensus. The strategy consists of my five main goals that, and they include prepare for terrorism, prepare for terrorism response missions, prevent and deter acts of terrorism, protect Florida citizens, visitors, and infrastructure, respond in an immediate and effective manner focused on the victims of the attack, and lastly, recover quickly and restore all our way of life following, its, following the terrorist attack. This all ties in with an unpredictable future. Terrorism has been present for many years and it will not stop. As a result, we can simplify terrorist attacks by introducing new tactics that follow the prepare, prevent, protect, respond, and recover strategy. These tactics include gun control, where eliminating sales or ownership of weapons are established, increased security personnel where there is a large amount of people, set an increase of law, of law enforcement officers at airports, and establish unmanned aerial systems where the country allows it. With all these in play, deaths from terrorist attacks will drop and the prevention of attacks will occur more often. This is a list of, my, of, of the sources that I use. If you have any further questions, please refer to them.